now that we've mastered completing the square, we're going to use that process to derive the quadratic formula. So, here we have a standard form of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and we're going to solve it by completing the square. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract c from both sides of the equation, and I get ax squared plus bx equals negative c, and I want the coefficient of my x squared term to be one, so I'm going to divide everything on both sides of the equation by a, as you see here, and that results in x squared plus b over ax equals negative c over a. Now, these two steps you can do in any order, doesn't matter, okay? Then the next thing I want to do is I want to complete the square, so I want to add a term to x squared plus b over ax to make it a perfect square, and that's where I use the idea of b over 2 squared to determine that term. And of course, our b term is b over a, and I want to divide that by 2, and then I want to square it. Well, that's the same as b over 2a squared, which results in b squared over 4a squared. Okay? Not real pretty, but that's what it is. So I'm going to add b squared over 4a squared to both sides of my equation. That makes the left-hand side of my equation a perfect square. I can put that in factored form as the quantity x plus b over 2a squared, and that's equal to b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. See how I use the commutative property on that side. What's so amazing about this process is we use so many of the definitions and uh, properties that we've learned in algebra. Okay, so now we know that we want to take the square root of both sides. Well, actually, before we do that, I think I want to simplify this term by writing it over a common denominator. The common denominator would be 4a squared. So minus c over a would be the same as minus 4ac over 4a squared, which results in the right-hand side of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a. Just cleaning it up a little bit. So now I have the quantity x plus b over 2a squared equal to b squared minus 4ac all over 4a. And here's my perfect square. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and that results in x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. And of course, 4a squared is a perfect square, so that simplifies to 2a. And again, remember, I'm solving for x by completing the square. So I want to subtract b over 2a from both sides of the equation, which leaves me x on one side of the equation. And that would result in minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Those have a common denominator. So I can use a commutative property and rewrite that as negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's what's known as a quadratic formula. So, trust me, you probably want to learn the quadratic formula because you don't want to have to derive it every time you want to use it. But know how you can derive it, and that's really powerful in your understanding of the mathematics. Okay, let's see how it works. The cool thing about the quadratic formula is you can solve, use it to solve any quadratic equation. Okay? And I notice that I don't have a quadratic equation in problem number one, so in order to solve it using the quadratic formula, I better make it equal to zero. Okay? So I'm going to solve the quadratic equation 6x squared plus 5x minus 4 equals zero by using the quadratic formula that we just derived. So I identify a, which is 6, b, which is 5, and c, which is negative 4. I remind myself of what the quadratic formula is. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I just substitute the values for a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. Now I recommend you actually show that because if you don't, you might mess up a sign, you might miss something, and that way you know exactly where you're starting. So I have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared 
minus 4 times 6 times negative 4, okay, all over 2 times 6. Maybe I'll put that in parentheses just to make that clearer. Okay, so you don't think that that's minus 4 or subtract 4, it's actually times negative 4. Okay, so we're just going to simplify from this point out. The radicand becomes 25 minus, plus 96 or the 121 and the other terms remain the same. So that's negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 121 over 12. And a yay, 121 is a perfect square. So that becomes negative 5 plus or minus 11 over 12. Now notice, that means there's two solutions. Negative 5 plus 11 over 12 and negative 5 minus 11 over 12. So we simplify both of those fractions to get x is negative 4 thirds or x is 1 half. Our solution set is negative 4 thirds and 1 half. Of course, you would need to verify each of these answers in the original quadratic to make sure that they're true. Let's do one more, really quickly. Quadratic, quadratic equation, x squared plus 3x minus 7 equals 0. a is 1, b is 3, c is negative 7. My quad, quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I substitute a, b, and c into the quadratic formula one by one, making sure I get all those values correctly. Then I just begin to simplify, okay? The discriminant is 9 plus 28, or 37. Um, negative b is minus 3, 2a is 2. So I end up with negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 37 all over 2. And again, those that represents two exact solutions negative 3 plus the square root of 37 over 2, and negative 3 minus the square root of 37 over 2. And that would be fine for an exact answer. Sometimes you'll need to estimate the value of the square root of 37 to estimate your answer, maybe to put it in context for a problem or whatever. So my estimate to the nearest tenth would be 1 sixth and negative 4.6. Okay? Try some of these.